Think you got Python functions figured out? Let's put that to the test with three quick practice problems. We left a link to the notebook with the practice problems in the description below. Let's get started with problem one. In this problem, we'll explore what happens when a function's return value isn't stored in a variable. Before we dive into the solution, pause the video if you want to try this on your own. Okay, let's trace the code step by step to try and figure out its output. To help with that, We'll use namespace graphics throughout this video to visualize how variables and functions are stored. If you're not familiar with how namespaces work in Python, check out our functions video linked in the description. When the code is executed, Python first reads the greet function definition. Here, Python memorizes the function's name, parameter, and body, and stores all of that in the global namespace. Now that the function is defined, Python can use it throughout the program. On the next line, Python calls the greet function with the argument Alice. This creates a local namespace where Python stores the name parameter and its argument Alice. In the body of the function, Python builds the return string by concatenating hello with the value of name. When the function returns, the string hello Alice is passed back to the calling point and the local namespace is destroyed. At this point, the function call expression evaluates the return value hello Alice. Hello Alice is then assigned to the greeting variable in the global namespace. When Python moves to the next line, it calls the greet function again. A new local namespace is created with the name parameter, which is assigned the value Bob. In the function's body, Python again creates the return string by concatenating hello with the value of the name variable. When the function returns, the string hello Bob is returned to the calling point and the local namespace is destroyed. At this point, the function call expression evaluates the return value hello Bob. But in this second call, we didn't assign the return value to a variable. So when Python moves to the final line of the program, we lose access to hello Bob. On the final line, Python prints the value of the greeting variable, hello Alice. This problem shows why a return value is lost when it is not assigned to a variable. If you want to use a return value later in your program, make sure to capture it in a variable. Awesome, let's move on to problem two. In this problem, We'll see how a return value from one function call can be reused as an input in another function call. Pause the video now if you'd like to try it yourself. All right, let's walk through the code to understand what's happening. Just like before, Python begins the execution by storing the add function's name, parameters, and body in the global namespace. On the next line, Python calls the add function, creates a local namespace, and assigns the arguments 5 and 10 to the parameters a and b in the local namespace. During the function call, Python calculates a sum of a and b to get 15. When the function returns, the function call expression evaluates to the return value, 15, and the local namespace is destroyed. 15 is then assigned to the result variable in the global namespace. On the next line of code, Python prints the result, 15. On the last line, we have nested function calls. Python handles this by first calling the add function, which creates a new local namespace. This time, the value of result, 15, is assigned to the parameter a, and 20 is assigned to the parameter b. Inside the function, Python adds 15 and 20 to get 35. When the return statement is executed, 35 is passed back to the calling point and the local namespace is destroyed. Since this function call is inside the print function, its return value, 35, is passed into the print function as an argument. The print function then displays 35 in the output box. This problem shows how a function's return value can be reused as an input in another function call to perform further calculations. Great. Let's move on to problem three. In this problem, we'll explore how a function can use multiple return statements to output different values depending on specific conditions. 
Feel free to pause the video if you want to try and solve it yourself. Okay, let's start tracing the code from the top. During execution, Python first memorizes the compute function's name, parameters, and body and stores them in the global namespace. On the next line, Python executes the first call to the compute function. This creates a local namespace where the arguments 3 and 2 are assigned to the parameters a and b. Inside the function, Python calculates the product of a and b to get 6. 6 is then assigned to the result variable in the local namespace. On the next line, Python tests whether the value of result is greater than 10. Since 6 is not greater than 10, Python skips the body of the if statement and moves to the final line of the function. On this line, Python adds 4 to our result variable to get 10. When the function returns, Python passes 10 back to the calling point and the local namespace is destroyed. 10 is then passed directly into the print function and displayed in the output box. On the last line of the program, Python calls the compute function again. This creates a new local namespace where the arguments 5 and 3 are assigned to the parameters a and b. Inside the function, Python calculates the product of a and b to get 15. 15 is then assigned to the result variable in the local namespace. On the next line, Python tests whether the value of result is greater than 10. Since 15 is greater than 10, Python moves into the body of the if statement. Here, Python subtracts 3 from our result variable to get 12. 12 is then returned to the calling point as the local namespace is destroyed. It is important to note that, in this case, Python does not execute the final return statement in the function. As soon as the return statement is executed, Python exits the function. Finally, Python prints the return value of the second function call, 12. This problem shows how you can combine conditionals with multiple return statements to pass back different values based on conditions. Awesome! If you want to see us break down more practice problems like these, let us know in the comments below and subscribe so that you don't miss out. If you found this video helpful, be sure to share it with a friend. And if you have any questions or topics that you'd like to learn about, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.